video I'm gonna talk about oxidative phosphorylation which is the fourth stage of aerobic respiration it takes place in the inner membrane of mitochondria which is this unlike Link and Krebs cycle they also take place in the mitochondria but not in the inner membrane they take place in the matrix of mitochondria let's remember that glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm not in the mitochondria now let's take a look at the other structures that are important for us to know to understand oxidative phosphorylation so the inner membrane folds to form cristae and on the crista we have stocked particles each stocked particle is made up of a protein channel and ATP synthase, which is an enzyme. Okay, let's take a closer look. So we have the outer membrane and we have the inner membrane, which is folded to form crista. And on the crista, we have stocked particle. Okay, this is the protein channel and this is ATP synthase. Actually, stocked particles are all around the inner membrane of mitochondria. And as every other membrane, it contains proteins and special groups of proteins in the membrane of mitochondria form something called electron transport chain, which we'll take a look at now. So for our syllabus, we don't need to know each one of these proteins, like what it's called and all of this. We just need to have a look at it and understand like what happens exactly. So first thing is reduced NAD comes in contact with dehydrogenase enzyme, which removes hydrogen from it. This is why it's called dehydrogenase. Okay. It forms NAD and protons and electrons. Why is this step important? Because without this step happening, we won't have NAD. So link reaction won't be completed and Krebs cycle won't be completed. Why? Because if you remember, we need NAD to carry the hydrogen that was released and form reduced NAD. So if this step doesn't happen, we won't have NAD. So we won't carry the hydrogen that was released. And so we won't be able to form uh, reduced NAD again. So again, reduced NAD met dehydrogenase enzyme which broke away hydrogen so we're left with proton electrons and NAD and now the electrons that were produced because of what happened here enter the transport chain where they will be transferred in a series of electron carriers so each electron will be carried from a higher level to a lower level from a higher level to a lower level and this basically causes the release of energy and this energy will be used by the proteins to pump out the protons that we got from here okay pump it out in the intermembrane space by active transport now remember the diagram that i drew earlier so this is stocked particle uh, which is formed of protein channel and atp synthase and now we know that the proteins on the inner membrane pumped hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space so now we have here hydrogen ions okay and obviously this caused the concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space to be higher than in the matrix so the hydrogen ions want to diffuse out of the intermembrane through the matrix but they can't through here and they can't through here why because this is a phospholipid bilayer so they can't pass through it the only way for them to pass is through the protein channel here. So hydrogen ions in the intermembrane diffuse through the protein channel, okay, from higher concentration to lower concentration. And this passage of hydrogen ions through the stocked particle stimulate ATP synthase to produce ATP. Now we have hydrogen ions in the matrix, right? And also the electrons that pass through the electron transport chain also come back in the matrix. So we have electrons, we have hydrogen ions, okay, and we have oxygen from aerobic respiration, from breathing. So they all combine together to form water, H2O. And this water is the product of respiration, if you remember. 
the equation is that oxygen plus glucose gives us carbon dioxide plus water. And this theory which explains the production of ATP during oxidative phosphorylation is known as chemiosmosis. And that's it for oxidative phosphorylation. Now, there's something else known as substrate-level phosphorylation, which is basically when ATP is formed from ADP and inorganic phosphate using an enzyme without chemiosmosis. So remember how in glycolysis and in Krebs cycle we formed ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate? This was substrate-level phosphorylation. Unlike oxidative phosphorylation, where ATP is formed by ATP synthase. And now let's look at the differences between the formation of ATP in oxidative phosphorylation and in substrate level phosphorylation. So, in oxidative phosphorylation, we need a hydrogen ion gradient. Because without a hydrogen ion gradient, no hydrogen ions will diffuse and so ATP won't be formed. We also need ATP synthase of stocked particles and we need electron transport chain. But in substrate level phosphorylation, we don't need hydrogen ion gradient, we don't use ATP synthase of stocked particles, and electron transport chain is also not needed. And another difference is that in oxidative phosphorylation, larger number of ATP is produced, 34 ATP. While in substrate level phosphorylation, it's so much less than that, it's just six ATP molecules. And now let's take a look at where these 34 ATP molecules came from. So in glycolysis, two reduced NADs were formed. And each one produces three ATP molecules. So we get six ATP. And then we had two link reactions because we had two pyruvate molecules from glycolysis. Each one went through one link reaction so we get two link reactions in total and in each link reaction one reduced NAD was formed so we got two so we got six ATP molecules because each one produced three we also had two Krebs cycles and in each one three reduced NAD were formed okay so we got six reduced NAD and each one forms 3 ATP. 6 multiplied by 3, 18. So we get 18 ATP from reduced NAD due to Krebs cycle. But we also formed 1 reduced FAD in each Krebs cycle. So 2 reduced FAD in total. And each reduced FAD produces 2 ATP molecules. So we get 4 ATP. And if you add these, we get 34 ATP. And now let's take a look at where the six ATP molecules for substrate level phosphorylation came from. So in glycolysis, when triose phosphate was converted into glycerate phosphate, we get one ATP. And if you remember, we had two triose phosphates and each one was converted into glycerate phosphate. So we get two ATPs. Also, when each glycerate phosphate was converted into a one pyruvate molecule, we got one ATP. And this happened two times because we had two molecules. So another two ATPs. And in Krebs cycle, we got directly one ATP, but we had two Krebs cycles, so we get two ATP. So in total, we get six ATP molecules due to substrate level phosphorylation. And that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful to you.